G'day mate, it's my name, it's Rob. We're here today at Washu, Worcester, or Washington University in St. Louis. God damn, look at that view. And let's get right into it. This is Rob Cobb on the job. Jeremy, how you, how you feeling? I'm excited to see this tunnel. Yeah, so we're, we're, we're going about trying to find this tunnel. This is a tunnel. There's not much else aside from that. Damn, look at that board. Whoa, look at that wall. I'll ask you, people really like to write. Oh my god. Who's this guy? It's a Pikachu, dude. <laughs> Do you know what this feels like? This feels like we've been walking for ages. It feels like Jetpack Joyride, where you just walk going through the facility and it's like the, you know? Whoa. Whoa. As you can see, we're walking alongside Parkside Cafe, also known as Shelter Pavilion. There's, there's a lot of options inside, as you can see. We've got pastries and different desserts and whatnot in the uh, espresso bar. And then... Hi! Hi. I'll do the video. I don't know what's happening over this side. Usually there are, like burgers, and fries, and... Salmon. What, what's that? Salmon. Yeah, sandwich. Oh yeah, and, and sandwiches. Salmon. Salmon? Oh, really? Yeah. Come to Park City if you want the bougie food. Please don't edit me out. No, no. You're not going to edit it, it out. Don't it. worry. Right now, we're standing outside historic Brookings Hall, a real cornerstone of the Washu experience. Beautiful view. This is where like 90% of Warshoe's promotional materials come from. Have you ever wondered what a thousand dollars feels like? Well actually, it's just that. These chairs are all around campus. Incredible. We're standing outside Kemper Art Museum. Kind of a flex, not many schools have an art museum in their bounds. Right here at Wolstel, and uh, we'll see if we're open. A lion with buried teeth advances on a horse within a colorful but largely desolate landscape. That's a pretty good description. <laughs> As you can see, we're in probably the biggest elevator of all time. Actually, fun fact, in the 1700s, they would put people in this elevator and they'd have fights to the death right here, contained, and only one person would walk out of the doors alive. The green wall we can see is filled with plants up to the brim. This is like the place where Washi does like 
90% of his promotional materials as well. Convocation, happens here, all the students gather around and it's a great time. Smacking fantastic. We've got loads of students studying until they physically can't anymore. Washington is right now in the peak of its final season. Now let's check out some of the accommodations on the bottom floor. Life on campus. We're seeing a high speed pursuit in real time. This dog is chasing a rabbit. Only stuff. And another dog is following suit. He's got a <laughs> massive scandal. Down below, we can see we've got the magnificent, illustrious. Candelara Centre. We've got a lot of entrepreneurs working in that centre, working on projects and their own student-led businesses, which we'll see in a bit. This complex is called Malincroft and connected to it is a subway, which many students dine at. At the bottom of Malincroft, we can see we've got the writing centre. All those these students are enrolled in college writing where you'll be expected to write lots and lots of essays. If you ever need help or just writing in general, the writing centre is right there. Malincroft is also home to the performing arts department here at Washu. There's plenty of cultural shows that we see year round, cost subsidised by the university. Right now, we're standing on Mud Field. It's a big field, probably one of the largest at Walshu. In honor of FIFA. Ya cabra la derecha para Xavi. Asistencia de Xavi. Messi cabra la derecha para Messi. Messi, 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 Messi. Immens Messi. Ancara Messi, Ancara Messi. Ancara Messi, 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 Ancara Messi,
The dock is well known for its wall of adverts, wall of yacht clubs, and student organizations, of which there are literally hundreds. You'll hear about the famous Butler Churning Club in a lot of Wash U's adverts, but you can also catch these clubs, which definitely you should sign up for. What a good time. Look at the ceiling. <laughs> the second floor of the dock is home to a lot of amenities. We've got a pool table, as you can see. We have a lot of spaces to work here. Comfy, comfy chairs and couches and whatnot. On Mudfield, we can also see the major academic buildings here. Simon Hall, Siegel Hall, the Law Library, and Wrighton Hall over there. And finally, we've got Bower Hall. If you see any of Wash U's promotional materials, you'll often see those flags or just this building as a whole, Bower Hall, is a really, really nice place to study. We've got the gym, the pool, and so much more. We're here, hitting the gym, really running loud. That was the indoor track, sliding the top of the court, the dance before the knee. I'm a little bit out of breath because we just ran on the court here. Washington is also home to many athletic programs. Track and field is one of them, but there are so many others. Joe, as a member of the gym, I have a question. What's yeah. your favorite part of the gym? My favorite part of the gym is... You have, you have an accent. Okay, my, my favorite part of the gym has to be these monkey bars right here. See these things? You know how in order to get big legs you gotta squat, you can't just use the machines? That's exactly what it does, but for your biceps. Facts coming Facts. from a real veteran right there. The gym is home to plenty of weights, which are all racked here. Yo. Games. You can also see over here a literal fleet of treadmills. I don't know why we have so many. As you can see, we've got people sitting right here. It's kind of a nice time. Yeah, the water's hot. Might as well just jump right in. Standing outside Francis Olympic Field, we've got lots of teams that play here: soccer, football. They've got games. The stands are packed. Currently, we're walking into what's known as the underpass, which is the connection from main campus to the South Forty. As you can see, all around the walls, we've got lots of paintings, lots of drawings for clubs, the many, many organizations here at Wash U. As you can see right now, we're 
standing outside a student run business. They run the business and set up shop by themselves for customers which are the students themselves. We're standing at the Clock Tower, which is a popular meeting spot for lots and lots of students. To my left is the Residential Life Centre. If you've ever got problems living on campus or have any questions about your housing situation, these are the people to turn to. Looking at this part of campus, we can see All the bears come to eat. Entering on in, we can see to our right, we've got Cherry Tree, perhaps the best place on campus to get pastries, desserts, that sort of thing. Walking in, we've got lots and lots of options. which you can get any items you want, put them up, and they'll stir it up, fry it up, all for you. If you're interested in the ocean meals, that's the place to go. Followed by pasta, summer chew it, pasta. It's good for the soul. We see pizza too often. Pizza is actually one of the fastest meals you can get in and out, just like that. Followed by global meals. Changes every single day. A different cuisine around the world today. We've got boomy style curry, chicken, steamed brown rice, sauteed snow peas and carrots. I think I will. This top nine, we've got allergies, and now we're on to the main occasion. We're going to get what many consider to be the staple of every Washu student's diet, the half and half. Ken, you're a patron of the half and half. What are your thoughts on it? Um, I guess this is an integral part of the Washu diet, you know? Um, it's quick, easy, and Deep in the heart of the Washu wilderness, we've got the cars and going. This is Washu's own community, grocery store right here on campus. And perhaps second to the half and half, which Washu students know all too well, we find ourselves with the non shim hot spicy ramen noodles. I've subsisted off this for months at a time. As you can see, this is the main dining area on campus. We've got lots and lots of first year and second year students eating from the Bears Den. can see what Washu students call the swamp. It's a patch of grass. It's not actually a swamp. Incredible. Most of the Ubers and transportation that come to Washington come through this road. We've reached a critical junction. To my left, we can see the path to the loop, which is the main place where students at WashU go to dine in. Next, we've got some of the residential housing here. We've got Village East and Nobra, where junior and sophomore students reside. Train 
stations on Washington campus. This is University City Big Bend. And Big Bend is just one of the stations that's part of the metro system connecting St. Louis. What a gentleman. You can see we've got a mail room and also a dining hall. Village house, we've got an elevator. But let's take the stairs, you know, save the planet a little bit. All residential areas on campus to get into the building you need one of these which is a key card. We're now here at my dorm. Every washu dorm comes equipped with a bed, a twin bed. Additionally you can see that the bed is raised to some extent to house all of my goodies down below. Dorms in the village have a chair which I have sat in multiple times. Finally we've got a closet which If I try hard enough, I can walk in. Most Washu students have some variation of a place where they can keep their foot pieces. A mini fridge is a common appliance found in most dorms. Dorms at Washu come with tables and dresses. Mine has multiple compartments where I can fit my things into. And finally, this is where the magic happens. Thank you for watching this video. I don't typically make content like this, but it's something that I've been meaning to do for a while, and I'm also interested in exploring this format a little bit more. Also, I want to give a major shout out to everyone that helped make this video. Without you guys, I would not have been able to do this. Thank you so much. And finally, if you found that to be useful, entertaining, or engaging, please consider subscribing. I pour tons of hours into making these videos the best they can be, and I appreciate your support. Finally, there was actually so much footage that I decided to create a blooper reel with the best and most funny bits across the three hours of filming. You can give it a watch here.